Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and today's subject is going to be around how to specifically target large perch. Now by large I'm tending to mean anything over kind of two pound or 40 centimeters if you're into your measuring that's a really good milestone to get to. So maybe you've been an ultra light angler, you've done a little bit on the canals, just got into your lure fishing and you're looking to catch a bigger one. Maybe you're looking to up your PB this year. You want to try and break the three pound barrier, four pound barrier or upwards. I'm going to try and give you some tips on venue location, uh, methods, things to look out for uh, and, and specifically how to hunt down those large fish. Uh, I've been fortunate this year. I've had 34 perch over three pound now. Uh, I had a bit of a mission this year to actually take my scales out a bit more. Um, because I'm a tournament angler, we do it a lot on measurements. Um, and although I did, I did break my PB this year as well, and uh, up to four six, but I'm not, not mega keen necessarily on PBs or weights uh, per se. I'm more of a tournament angler, but I did I just wanted to like take the plastic bag, take the scales out and just start recording this year. And it happened to be the best year I've ever had at the same time as well. So hopefully I can pass on a few tips to you. Um, right, first one, hands down, start with the basics. It's gotta be around location. You've got to be fishing on venues that you are almost certain hold those quality fish, all right? Um, there's venues, for example, like the Grand Union Canal uh, on the LACC stretches. So one of my favorite bits at Warwick. Um, you just never seem to get perch over 35, 36 centimeters or so. Um, I haven't heard of one from there over 40 centimeters in a long time. So it just for whatever reason, just doesn't seem to produce big perch, it produces loads of Xander, a few pike and various different bits of fishing, but the perch fishing, they just don't get that big. So the first tip, you've definitely got to find yourself a venue that you're almost certain holds some quality fish. Um, that can be a canal. That could be a river, could be a still water, could be a reservoir. They do have them. You'd be surprised. Uh, there's more, there is a, there's more canals than you think in this country that have got big twos and three pound perch in. Um, certainly some of the rivers uh, have got some absolute quality perch in and the still waters and certainly the reservoirs because of their size, they've, they've got what I would probably class as some of the biggest fish that you're going to find in the UK. Um, so try and adjust it accordingly, depends on what you've got local to you, but go to your tackle shop, go online, do some research, but also just get on your feet a little bit as well. Get out there, talk to anglers on the bank uh, and try and hunt down those venues that have got, you, you're almost certain have got those big fish in. Then you've got to kind of look at what season you're in and you've also got to obviously locate the per you might be a huge bit of river you might be on the river thames for example you know it definitely holds big perch but where there's miles and miles and miles of it the rev reservoirs are the same they've got huge areas of what i call fishing in the desert um with with very very little fishing and then you've got certain areas where those big perch tend to like hanging out okay and you've got to try and learn those number one i always say this they're structure addicts they love hanging around jetties boys, yacht clubs, towers, underwater stone peninsulas, weed beds, any types of structure, physical structure that you've got in the water, um, you're generally going to be in the right area for big perch. And then, um, you know, once you think you've located them, it's, it's about the methods, but we'll come on to my three favorite methods in a minute. Um, there's one in there, that, or there's not one in there that is going to surprise a lot of you. And I can't deny that it catches a huge number of big perch, but it's not my favorite method. So I'm not going to put it in, but I'll come on to that in a second. Um, once, so once you've located a venue, you've got to look for your structure. And then you've got to really start thinking about certain areas. So let's take the Thames, for example. Um, huge areas in between locks and weirs. The locks and weirs, well oxygenated water, gonna have a high amount of bait fish in them. They're definitely gonna hold big perch. You know, anywhere, it's got loads of structure as well. That's a classic. If you're spending too much time fishing in between those areas on long straights of sort of what I tend to call no man's land, 
you're probably going to struggle. You'll pick the odd ones up in the summer, so a little bit on seasonality. In the summertime, they are going to spread out a little bit more. Um, you tend to have to fish reaction baits a little bit more. And again, I'll come on to that in a second. But in the winter time, when those perch are going to be at their fattest and at their biggest, they're always going to be biggest in, in about March. When they're pre-spawn, they've been feeding all winter, they've got spawn in them, and they're going to be as fat as pigs and that is the time to if you definitely want a pb march end of feb and march is the time that you really really want to concentrate on big perch fishing all right um, but they are available obviously all throughout the year um, areas that you've got turning bays areas that you check the match report sometimes you know big bream shoals or roach shoals you'll often find where any type of fish like to be all types of fish like to be so when you discover bream shoals for example quite often you're going to find perch and zander mixed in with them when you find lots of bait fish you're obviously going to find the predators near them as well so you've got to be able to search through those areas that don't have a huge amount in them and then you've got to once you think you've located a, a few or, or an area then you've got to slow down and go through your rotation of lures to try and trick them into into obviously biting um, right, let's maybe move on to my three key types of lure. So the first one, hands down, is always going to be a nine centimetre shad tease, Western shad tease. It is just a big perch slayer. I would use this any time of year, probably other than when I think the water is at its absolute coldest probably December and maybe a bit of January. I still might give it a go, but I'm probably gonna give it less of a go in those very, very cold conditions. It's a superb all-rounder. It's got lots of body roll, which means that the depth of the body, big tail, loads of vibrations. It just seems to be the perfect size as well for big perch. Um, but this is a cracking bait for a, what I call a search technique. All right, so particularly when the water's a bit warmer, you might want to be covering those perch a little bit more spread out. You might want to be covering quite a few swims, quite a few areas during a day, all right? And that is the perfect type of bait. I fish it on generally a slightly overweighted jig head. So for example, if I was going to use, especially when that water's a little bit warmer, I am going to be using 10 grams generally as a minimum, but quite often, even in shallow water, I'm quite happy to move up to 15 or 20 grams. It really gets that paddle tail working. Uh, fishing it fast in that slightly warmer water as well often initiates a reaction strike and a, and a feeding response just from the speed, and it doesn't give them too long to investigate the lure. So you're looking at that kind of hardcore hunting, hungry hunting instinct. Uh, so don't be afraid of using slightly bigger jig heads, um, you know, and really getting that paddle tail working because it can. It can really fire them up, those big perch. Cracking search technique, and particularly with a heavier jig head, you are having to wind a little bit quicker. So you do get to get more casts in, cover more water during a day. Um, but that is in the middle, all right? At the fast end... The West Inn Buzz Bite, six centimetre, runs to runs anywhere between five and sort of ten foot, depending on how um, high or low I'm holding the rod, um, depending on what braid I've got on and depending on how far I'm casting. The longer you cast, the deeper they get, the thinner the braid, the deeper they get, um, etc. Lower you hold the rod, the deeper it gets. Um, this has just been amazing this year. Seems to be per big perch are definitely cannibals, and this color in particular, bling perch, it's got amazing orange belly to it, uh, beautiful kind of uh, lifelike stripes and stuff down the side, absolutely amazing. Top tip on that one warm water when they're feeding, when they're willing to chase a bait, fish it almost as fast as you can wind it. Um, so that's my super fast bait, that's my anywhere from medium slow up to medium fast. And then once we get down into those cold temperature periods, I am a huge fan of fishing bottom baits. Um, for me, 
it's it's a crawfish type bait, um, a creature type bait, often putting a skirt on as well. So here we go, we've got the, the West End stand up jig head. All right, so it will, it's got a nice like slightly curved area there, which means it stands up on the 45 degrees like that. Um, I've got a bit of a skirt giving me plenty of movement, very, very creature-like, very nymphy, crayfishy, Big perch love big crayfish baits, all right? Uh, and the Westing Cree Craw on there as a trailer. Really, really superb bait that. And the number, the number one thing is, if that's gonna go super fast, that's gonna go medium, that is gonna go slow. You can take your time. You can cast it out, twitch it along, put the rod down, make a cup of tea, drink your tea, pick the rod back up, twitch, twitch, don't be afraid to be very, very slow with this bait, all right? It's in those times when that water temperature is sub six degrees, you know, they are generally not going to come very high off the bottom, unless there might often be a window, a feeding period window, maybe half hour to an hour during that day. Often it's just in that early afternoon, after lunchtime, it's dark by four o'clock. The temperature's just coming up and about that one to two o'clock period, I find is great. After you get to two o'clock, you start feeling that chill in the air, that sun's going down. I actually, I'm not a huge fan of that dusky time during the winter. I think that feeding period is often just when the light is just right at sort of two o'clock if it's dark at four o'clock. Um, but so if you find them in that window, feeding window, you might very well catch them on the shad tees. But any other time you're looking to locate those perch and you're looking to offer this really, really slow and don't lift it more than about 12 inches off the bottom. All right, keep that bottom bait. It sits itself on the 45 like that. So it's gonna hop, hop, hop and dead stick. Those bites take forever to come sometimes and it's because they're looking at the lure. There's a little bit of movement. They're kind of interested, they come up maybe it's a slight drag, they take forever to make their mind up and they take forever to, to bite that lure sometimes. So you've got to slow everything down. Um, the, the method that is obviously very, very similar to this is gonna be the Ned Rig. But for some reason, I just can't get on with the Ned Rig. I just I don't have any confidence in it. There's tons of people out there that have caught hundreds or thousands of huge perch on them. It just isn't my method. Uh, don't know why, it doesn't suit me, doesn't really suit my style. I fish it very rarely, but it's one of those things that every time I tie it on, it's a bit of a last resort for me. And every time it's a last resort, the chances of it catching are very slim. So I end up losing confidence in that method more than, than gaining confidence. But um, yeah, so there we go, guys. Few tips on location. Make sure the right venue has got big perch in. When you find the right venue, make sure you're looking in the right areas. And then definitely when you're in the right areas, make sure you've got the right baits on at the right time of year, all right? Fishing the right speeds. So in the summer, super quick. In the spring and the autumn, you can be medium quick. And when that water temperature is cold, definitely, definitely slow drag and dead stick these baits on the bottom and give them plenty of time. You do have to pay attention because they're gonna be tiny little ticks of bites, but pay attention uh, uh, to that braid, watch that braid, and you're gonna get these tiny little tick bites, strike into them. Um, but yeah, chances are, if I was targeting a fish over three pound, they would definitely be my three baits throughout the year. All right, so there you go, guys. Hope you've enjoyed that. Any comments or questions, or you want me to make a video on anything for you, pop it in the description below. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.